Hello, I'm Matt Jackson. I'm a mechanical engineer and today I'm going to do an example of hex meshing um, using NX. Uh, this example has previously been carried out by Ibersia using FEMAP. There seems to be a lot of examples uh, on YouTube uh, of FEMAP but not so many using NX. So I'm going to repeat this example using NX um, to demonstrate uh, the differences uh, and advantages between NX and FEMAP. The major difference is that um, the modeling is done in NX's own um, modeler, uh, formerly Unigraphics and the pre and post processing is done in the advanced simulation uh, bolt-on. So the first thing uh, we have to do uh, when using NX is to create a new model or a part. So I'm going to select a folder where I want to store the model and give it a name. Hex meshing example one. Okay, the modeling application then opens, and this is where we can uh, generate a geometry if we wish, or in this case, I'm going to import a parasolid. Okay, there's the the geometry. This geometry, uh, for reference, was created using SolidWorks. We then switch applications and go into the advanced simulation and create a new finite element model, a FEM. This then generates an additional file, so we get a .fem file and by default it will go to the same folder. Okay. These, this is now the FEM uh, options, so what type of geometry we want to import. So, for example, if we were going to create a 1D beam elements, them types of things, we would want to in, uh, import lines, circles, etc., sketch curves. Uh, for this example, I'm not going to import anything. This is all visible all geometry so these are the bodies to use I'm just going to keep the default and I'm not going to create an idealized part. Uh, an idealized part is a clone of the original geometry so if you were using NX as a 3D modeling package uh, this would then take a copy or a clone of the original geometry so when if you were doing geometry preparation, geometry clean up, that type of things you wouldn't affect the original CAD part so I'm not going to create one of the, these this time so I'm just going to accept those, OK. We are now in the post processor this is where we're going to create our elements for this example we are going to uh, use a 2D uh, quad mesh as a seed and we're going to use those elements to create a 3D hexahedral mesh. Within NX uh, we're going to create a 2D mapped mesh so these are going to create quad elements. Uh, quad elements like uh, regular shapes rectangles, squares, that kind of thing. So it's going to be very difficult to create a quad mesh on this surface without any preparation. Um, I will demonstrate what the elements will look like. Uh, they will be poor quality. There we go, so you can see that in regular shaped areas, it's created uh, good quality elements uh, around these corners it's not created a very uh, high quality mesh so I'm going to cancel that 
So what we need to do is we need to prepare the geometry and by, to do this I'm going to split this uh, face, this polygon face using uh, a sketch. So I'm going to switch applications I'm going to open my part file first, switch applications back into modeling and then create a sketch on this face. I'm going to switch off auto dimensioning so NX doesn't dimension everything that I do and I'm going to start by offsetting some curves. So I'm going to pick single curve and I'm going to pick these curves here and I'm going to offset them. Apply. I'm also going to draw a center line as the part as the part symmetric and convert that to a reference curve. I'm then going to put some additional curves in, but I'm going to split against. Make sure that that's vertical. horizontal. I'm just going to add some dimensions and make them 10. Close and then I'm going to mirror these curves about that center line. Okay, so that is our sketch done. I'm now going to divide polygon face with the sketch. Apply and then right click hide the sketch. Okay. We can then switch applications, go back into advanced simulation and display the fem. Okay. So we make sure we save. I'm running out of time on my free uh, screen recorder, so I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to mesh it in part two.